Welcome to America Today. Your number one source of reliable and verified news, and in-depth features on the daily happenings around America. R. Kelly was in a good mood after winning more than half of the counts charged against him in the indictment that led to his Chicago trial, following a rather impressive four-week showdown by his legal team, led by defense attorney Jennifer Bonjean at the Dirksen Federal Courthouse, downtown Chicago, but the government's move to drain him dry of every cent, even before the appeal must have ruined his mood. U.S. District Judge for the Eastern District of New York, Anne Marie Donnelly ruled Wednesday, that the R&B King pays just under $309,000 to his alleged victims, following his sentence last year that included restitution payments to his alleged victims on top of the $100,000 court fine. The funds are supposedly meant to cover the cost of treatment for herpes and psychotherapy for the women. The big chunk of the money will supposedly go to one of the alleged victims, referred to only by her pseudonym Jane, who accused Kelly of giving her herpes sexually transmitted disease during one of their encounters. Then the other $8,400 will supposedly go to a woman identified as Stephanie. Kelly could be on the hook for tens of thousands of dollars more to pay for herpes treatment and counseling for a second alleged victim, Stephanie once the final tally of her treatment bill is supposedly calculated. Why the judge would even go ahead with the restitution hearing without these facts is truly disturbing. Judge Donnelly had unfairly ruled early September that the seizure of the just under $28,000 commissary funds from R. Kelly's prison account will move forward, after it had been put on a freeze following demands from prosecution, awaiting the ruling. The decision come after a brief battle with Kelly's lawyers led by defense attorney Jennifer Bonjean, who sought to fight the move, arguing that the money was incorrectly confiscated, as the government's notice of default and restitution was not yet finalized, when the funds on the account were initially frozen. The government seems to be in such a rush to affect the full New York sentence monetary conditions, ahead of an impending appeal that could see the whole sentence reversed. Following the recent acquittal of R. Kelly's co-defendants, his former business manager Daryl McDavid and former employee Milton June Brown, inevitably proving that there was no enterprise as Jennifer Bonjean had always argued. This could have sent chills down the prosecutor's spines, prompting them to push that the sentencing terms be affected in fast forward, with hope of realizing the most they possibly can ahead of the much dreaded appeal hearing. The Grammy-winning, multi-platinum selling songwriter, appeared at the restitution hearing in the federal court in Brooklyn via video from the lockup in Chicago, and only spoke to exchange greetings with the judge and to turn down an offer to say more. None of the victims were in attendance. The singer's 1996 hit single, I Believe I Can Fly, that earned him three Grammys in one year, becoming an inspirational anthem played at school graduations, weddings, in advertisements and elsewhere, including the inauguration of former U.S. President Barack Obama in 2008, allowed him to make quite the fortune. How much of a fortune though? You might ask. Reports claim, he boasted a net worth in excess of $115 million and that the ignition hit maker could have easily been worth over $200 million today, however, that all became impossible the moment his career and reputation came tumbling down, thanks to the constant, unfounded allegations against him, including the infamous surviving R. Kelly docuseries. Due to his ongoing legal battles, and past issues involving taxes, R. Kelly's net worth is said to have dropped from over $100 million to a miserly $100,000. Now, with the government looking to milk him dry, even of his last cents, his money troubles are anything but far from over. His only hope now is in a successful appeal, that Bonjean is already fully preparing for, that could see his sentence turned, and he could very well resume his successful music career and grow an even higher level of wealth in no time. That's all we had for you today. Please let us know in the comment section below, whether you feel it is actually fair for the government to go this hard on R. Kelly, well aware of his current financial status. We value your honest opinion. Thanks for watching yet another feature from America today. If you are new to this channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss any of our upcoming features.